Hey everybody, in this video we are going to be exploring a Star Wars dataset in Neo4j's AuraDB Free, so let's get into it. Alright, so first things first is we're going to need a Star Wars dataset, so why don't we head on over to Kaggle.com and see if we can find anything for free there. Alright, so we're going to head on over to uh, datasets. Let's do a quick search for Star Wars, enter. Let's filter the results by data set here. And this one looks pretty decent. We got a CSV file for characters, planets, species, vehicles, starships. So that's kind of cool. Let's scroll down here, just take a look at it really quick. Everything looks all kosher. Let's go ahead and download. Now, once you have the data set downloaded, you'll want to go over to Neo4j's ORDB and start up a new instance. So let's go ahead and do that now. Select ORDB free. Let's give our instance a name. Let's call it Star Wars. Select our GCP region here, Iowa. Your mileage may vary. Let's go ahead and create the instance. All right, I'm going to copy the database password into a secure location. Perfect. I have stored it in safely and I'm going to continue. Now this process is going to take up to two minutes uh, for your instance to spin up. But once you do, what's going to happen is this, uh, this gray circle over here is going to turn green. And then once that's up and running, uh, we're going to go ahead and start importing our data. All right, and there we have it. We got a running instance of our database here called Star Wars. And the next thing that we'll want to do is import our uh, freshly downloaded data set. So let's go ahead and select the importer tool. Next thing we'll want to do is drop in our data set here. We're going to want to keep it simple. So we have five CSV files that we're going to play with, but let's go ahead and bring in the characters for one we got planets likely where each of our characters are from and we have the species type for each of the characters all right so we have three csv files here that we've just brought in uh, to data importer here and now what we want to do is sketch out the data model for our data sets so let's go ahead and add a node and let's call this one characters. Perfect. And we'll want to assign the file type or the files that one of the files that we brought in here. So let's go ahead and select the character CSV file and give it some properties. By default, it's probably a good idea to just select all of them uh, unless you are very particular about which uh, which properties that you want to have associated with each node. So in my case, I'm just going to keep it simple. Just select all of them. All right, there we go. It gets populated. Now we want to select the ID uh, for the node. And we'll just say, let's just give it the name here as the ID. Now what we'll want to do is draw a relationship to the planets, so where these characters are from. All right, so let's give this node here a title called planets. Select the file that this one is associated to, which is planets.csv. And let's give that properties as well. Select all, keep things simple, confirm. Select the property ID is the name of the planet. And now what we'll want to do is identify the relationships between these two nodes. So it's characters from planets in this case. You can be creative, you can label it, whatever you want to label it. Uh, but in our case, it's just characters from planets. That just makes a lot of sense. All right. And then for this one, the file type that we're going to associate with this relationship is um, we're going to select the characters. And from within the characters uh, CSV file, uh, we want to be able to pick the characters, um, what field is associated with this. So we want the character's name 
and associate that to the planet's uh, homeworld. All right, once you have that, as you can tell, all of the lines that were once dotted are now solid lines. We have one more data set here called species that we want to map out on our data model here. So let's go ahead and uh, drag one from characters, call that one species here. Let's associate that to the file CSV, species.csv. Let's give it some properties. Let's select all of them for the purpose of this demo and give it an ID species name. Here we go. And there we go. It's solid. Uh, now what we want to do is identify the relationships between the characters and the species types. So let's go ahead and call this characters. Let's say identifies as, there we go, as species. All right, so let's get that. Let's select the character CSV file from, it's gonna be the, from the character's name to the character's species. And there we have it. Let's see if we can actually associate uh, or draw a relationship between species and planets. That might be kind of interesting. So let's go ahead and draw that relationship there. Originated from. So that'll be the relationship there between species and planets. Let's see if species, if we can find it here. We got the species name and lo and behold, we have the home world. So looks like we might be able to do this. Let's try it out. All right, so we've just drawn up our uh, our data model now, uh, and everything looks to be um, fulfilled. All we got all these uh, solid lines. Now let's just go ahead and run the import. All right, we're gonna paste that password that we saved from earlier when we set up the instance in our ORDB account. We're gonna run it. We got the little status bar here. And it's pretty quick, three seconds there. It's really nothing just because uh, there's not a whole lot of data that we're playing with. Uh, it's just whatever was provided to us in the uh, in the data set from Kaggle. So uh, in this one, you can check out the results. So characters, uh, 87 nodes were created. We have 61 nodes that were created for planets. Species nodes, we have 37 different types of species. Uh, we have, and then these are the relationships uh, results here. We have 87 relationships uh, from the uh, from relationship here, the identify as relationship. We have 82 relationships and the originated from, we have 37. All right, so let's go ahead and close this out and begin exploring the data uh, using Bloom. So for that, you'll wanna head over to the ORDB console. Go ahead and select explore. All right, and then put in your username, password. And now Bloom's gonna do its thing. All right, so once you're here, once Bloom has loaded, what you'll wanna do is get a whole new fresh perspective. So all this default stuff here goes away and you're just left with a totally brand new scene that's been untouched. So why don't you head on over to uh, the little, uh, icon over here in the upper left corner, select perspectives. You can create a perspective here. Let's create a blank one. All right, perfect. Let's use that perspective. Now we have everything cleared out. Now we'll just have to add our categories. So we have three categories that we created. We created the characters category with all these various different properties, property values in there. We have the planets categories with their associated properties here. And we have the species categories. Perfect, right there. And now what we can do here, once we have everything selected, once we have all the uh, categories selected, we'll then want to, uh, we didn't have the flexibility to start uh, stylizing uh, our data. Uh, so let's say if we wanted a different color for species, let's give it um, let's give it this little magenta color 
here planets let's give it an earthy green one and characters let's give it this uh this bluish color right here and all right so now that we've selected uh what our color code would be for each of the different categories um in our data set uh we'll just want to go in and just start running a query uh in bloom so with bloom everything is readily available the moment you've uh you've uploaded your data into uh, neo4j and we can go ahead and just start clicking around so we want let's just say for example we want to explore characters from a particular planet all right and that's it not a single line of code was uh was written for this we just hit enter and uh out pops uh 136 nodes so from here you can kind of just take a look around what we see so right here we have uh tatooine we have these various characters we got luke skywalker obviously uh anakin skywalker darth vader um and so you know you can zoom out again um and just start exploring other areas we got naboo over here r2d2 um and you can you can see very clearly just based on the uh on the color code that we have signed each of these categories um it's very responsive you can uh drag these nodes around and really manipulate it however you want to uh, make these uh relationship lines longer or shorter just so you can clearly see uh what's happening on the scene um from here uh, go ahead and zoom out. Let's go ahead and clear the scene. For example, so on a Mac, that's going to be command and backspace uh, to clear the scene. Let's clear our search parameters here. Uh, let's say we want to explore what our uh, characters identifies as. So what species they identify as. All right. So we can go ahead and do that. Not a single line of code written again and boom here we go we got a bunch of uh, uh nodes in relationship we have 119 nodes right there let's go ahead and zoom in on this one so the biggest cluster of all is humans of course and these are all of uh the various characters in the data set that identifies as humans so that's kind of cool um i mean your knowledge may vary of course and i did not go into any of the data sets to clean it up whatsoever just for the purpose of this demo uh just wanted to show you all how easy it is to upload data sets and uh really uh drawing the relationships uh between uh, the various characters in the movies of star wars in my case here all right, and let's go ahead and clear this scene here. Again, that's going to be command backspace to clear the scene very quickly. And let's go ahead and explore the last relationship here that we uh, built in our data model where it is species originated from planet. All right, let's go ahead and uh, run that query again with zero coding whatsoever. So we can see all these one-to-one -one, um, relationships here. Uh, we got NA here. Um, again, did not do any cleanup on the data whatsoever. But as you can kind of see from uh, from these example, you know, it, it kind of gives you a good um, good idea of how how everything's all kind of interconnected there between species and planets. Uh, but yeah very cool stuff all right well that's it for this video if you found this video helpful at all go ahead and give it a like and a share and for more information about neo4j and neo4j aura db go ahead and head on over to neo4j.com to learn more until next time may the fourth be with you